14 years old. I remember the night very clearly because, I mean, it, it was the night that changed things for me. What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. And I'm Morgan. And this is the Paul and Morgan, Paul and Morgan Show. Today's video, we got Morgan Cat Statue joining us. Morgan Cat Statue, you know that I have a special place for you in my heart. So today, you guys, I thought I would talk to you about my testimony, my story. If you are new here, we are making Christian advice videos on life, love, and dating to help you have hope and be free. So subscribe. I do feel like these are unique opportunities. So let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, I'm grateful that I get to share what you've done in my heart. I pray that you would minister through this story. You would use my words, help me to articulate, and just bless this video. Bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Where to begin? Cat Statue Morgan, uh, as usual, anything that you have to chime in, something that maybe I forget to say, go ahead and blast it out because your purrs are music to my ears. So my story, I grew up in a Christian home. I was actually homeschooled. My mom and dad both hung on to very Christian um, values, morals. They trained us up in the Bible, okay? It was good. I am blessed by that. I am blessed by my upbringing. Just because you're blessed by a Christian upbringing does not make you a Christian. You know, we have free will. We have freedom to choose. I, I do feel like the Lord in his grace and, and because my upbringing protected me from a lot of stuff, a lot of crap, at an early age. Got into my teen years, I was doing my thing, I was a good kid, um, but yeah, you know, you get to that age, 13, 14, you start getting curious about things, and I was no exception. 14 years old, I remember the night very clearly, because, I mean, it, it was the night that changed things for me. Laying in bed, I was, uh, I actually had my Bible open, and the Holy Spirit hit me in a very deep, emotional way that cut me to the heart. He spoke to me in that moment, he, convicted my heart of my selfishness and I was sitting there like I am so selfish my selfishness my sin I'm living for myself I'm just doing whatever feels good to me that I want I'm not thinking about other people I'm not really thinking about how I can serve God and put him over myself you know on the outside someone looking in would have been like man Paul is a good kid I was so selfish in my heart when I realized that so deeply, it was like, oh God, I'm so sorry. Please change me. And the second thing he showed me in that moment was, Paul, I love you so much. It was just like he filled me up with his love. The Bible says his kindness leads us to repentance. He was so kind to me in that moment. And that night changed me. What's that? Talking to Cat Statue earlier, he actually had a similar experience. Um, you'll get your time to share in another video, maybe. I love you, Cat Statue. My teenage years, the days after that, yeah, like he had done a work in my heart, but I, I still remember I had my struggles, but praise God again, like he he just had grace for me that I didn't get into a lot of the crap. I, I stayed away from drugs. I stayed away from relationships with girls that I felt like, okay, this could lead to to a bad place, to doing sexual things that I don't want, so I just stayed clear of that. In college, there was another very significant spiritual thing that happened to me. It wasn't so so happy. I just remember there being months and months where I would go to the Lord, to the Lord, seeking Him, and I wouldn't feel Him anywhere. I mean, it almost made me, it did, it made me question my faith in a very real way. I was going and spending time praying, nothing. Didn't hear, didn't feel Him. It was like he had removed his presence from me. And in that moment, I questioned everything. I questioned the Lord's existence. I questioned the validity of the Bible. It was such a dry time for me to the point where there were days I wouldn't want to leave my dorm room. I wouldn't want to talk to anybody. I wasn't happy. That was the lowest point I think I've ever had in life. Because when suddenly you don't feel the Lord at all, man, your faith, it gets racked. And it's like, okay, Am I going to believe even when I don't see, I don't hear, I don't feel, I feel crappy? I was in church one day and the pastor was talking about like reading through the whole Bible. It had helped him when he was experiencing like deep ups and downs, doubts and so forth. And it lifted him out of that. So I went back and I just started reading a ton of scripture. And it did, like it affected my faith and my doubt. I think that was one of the, the huge things. It, it lifted me out. I started getting back around believers and opening myself up. I, I without realizing it, had kind of isolated myself spiritually, but ultimately, and, and I'm just going to share this, I don't have a lot of clarity of why the Lord allowed me to go so low that freshman year of college. I think that, that you guys too, in talking to other Christians, 
Like we have moments where we get super tested and if you're like me growing up in the church, suddenly you're like, Paul, do you believe this? Do you really believe this? Why? You're not with your parents anymore telling you what's true, telling you the Bible's true. Do you really believe in God and what he says in his word? And when you suddenly don't feel him at all, are you going to choose to believe? And I had to go back to, to things like, look at the world. Look at the amazing creation. Look at my skin. Like I remember just like, I am not by chance. Like God is real. You just start going to the fundamental things and that's a good, it's a good place to get back to that. So I guess, I mean, I can see kind of how the Lord used that really dry time, but I still don't have total clarity and I hope someday I will. I hope that made sense and wasn't just like, what's Paul talking about? The Lord brought me out of that time, praise God, and I've never gone back to that. Praise God, man. Whew. Let's get back to a, a poppier note, okay? Graduated from college went out to Los Angeles. I was like, I just wanna be where everything's going on. People discouraged me and said, Paul, LA, it's just a, a place of darkness. So much um, just carnal sensuality there. I was set on going. The Lord took care of me, he blessed me. Yeah, there's a lot of, of darkness there, but the light shines brightest in a dark place. And the Lord's doing stuff there. Lived there for a little while, came back, and shortly after I got back, the Lord did another big thing in my life. 22 years old, get back from LA, the Lord's showing me that like, I'm struggling with, with the legalism. I wasn't experiencing true freedom in the Lord. I got back and I went to this prayer meeting in Wilmore, Kentucky. It was the most free, intimate worship I'd ever seen. And I was standing there like kind of stiff, like I want this, but I don't know, is this something I can have? And I started going every week and the Lord transformed my life through the words that those people prayed and spoke over me, um, through the worship he, allowed me to enter in one thing he spoke to me shortly after that first meeting paul i am so worthy to be praised i am worthy of your whole heart in worship and that hit me and it transformed my worship also he started teaching me freedom freedom from legalism freedom from trying to make myself a stronger christian faith and christianity in my own strength but rather to just be who god created me to be and to live in him he's shown me so much and Morgan's helped me with this even so this is very recent but just how much um, authority we have in Christ that we can walk in freedom from just Satan's attacks like yeah his attacks are real Satan is gonna try to beat us up but we have God on our side if God is for us who can be against us so here I am now walking with the Lord married to my wife Morgan she encourages me in my faith all the time Kat Satchu any thoughts on my testimony can you relate to that for um cause I know you have a pretty powerful testimony you stole food, specifically fish, out of, of fine dining restaurants, and you were kind of delivered from that. That's a pretty cool testimony. Maybe you can share that with us sometime. Comment below with any questions you have about my testimony, what I shared, or also maybe comment an encouragement for someone who might watch this and be like, I just don't know if God's real. I'm struggling with my own testimony. Um, you know, the comment section is just to encourage and strengthen brothers and sisters in Christ. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Guys, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We got merch coming, I think, next week. Get ready for that. Cat at you, as always. Okay, okay, okay. We'll catch you all very soon. Have hope. And be free. Listen to this. What's that? <coughs>